so before we get super into this podcast and the movie, I wanted to just say one thing. One okay. Thing. okay. What, what one thing? So all podcast loves to make fun of you. Like, yes. loves to. That's, like, probably the favorite pastime. So um, a game company actually sent us a game to review, Origami Gameworks. Awesome game. It's called Bigly. President Bigly, technically. Okay, fine. Regardless. Anyways, so the company asked us to review it on my Instagram, Backyard Adventures, with like little underscore thingies in between the words if you haven't seen our Instagram. But anyway, um, for the marketing advertisement thing, we decided to dress Tyler up as Donald Trump, and he, he was doing impressions to kind of, you know, get into character. The best game ever, believe me. And now that is saved forever. Oh, so, God. yes, it was, it's, so it's wonderful and it makes me laugh all week. So if you want to see the visual representation, go check out our Instagram. In my defense, the impression is way better with the, the full outfit. Yeah, so I mean, if you need us to do a short little video, oh, God, we no. can no, totally... No, 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 we'll never play. mind. It's not that good. Anyways, so I just wanted to let you guys know that there is a code for the game. It's a uh, Bigly Demo um, with a space between Bigly and Demo. And um, you get 15% off if you go get the game. The game is on Amazon. Just type in, like, Bigly Game on Amazon. It comes out to, like, 12 bucks. So it's a good stocking stuffer. But anyways, just wanted to let you guys know, since you all like to make fun of Tyler, so it should be fun. You can make memes of the picture if you want. It's also I making fun of the that. president, which most people like to do. Facts. But I also want to see memes of Tyler and No. Costume, no so. memes. No memes. So, anyway. So the movie that we did this week was Jobs with Ashton Kutcher, which I know all of you are disappointed that we picked this one. In my defense, I only knew this one existed. I didn't know about the other one until y'all told me. So. I'm Tyler. I'm Shay. And this is Cinematically Correct. So the movie is all about Jobs. Steve Jobs. And yeah, him. not Jobs. Not like Dirty Jobs. No, it's not micro Dirty Jobs. No. I, why would you go to that automatically? I don't understand. I don't know. It's a weird thing to say. But anyways, so the movie is basically, a, all basically it's his entire life from, it goes from his college days all the way up through Apple introducing the iPhone, I believe. iPod. iPod. Okay. It's iPod. And on Wikipedia it said iPhone. So. No, I, iPhone would have broken the, the movie. Like, that's, that's what turned Apple into... Well, so I thought I missed that part because it says on... It's either Wikipedia or IMDb that it says that they... Intro, it ends with it introducing the iPhone. And I'm like, I obviously fell asleep at that part because I don't remember that. But anyway, at the beginning of the movie, he introduces the iPod. So right. I'm assuming it came full circle then. So, anyways, the college days are basically him tripping on acid... Or and, LSD or whatever and, you want to call it. And only going to calligraphy class of all classes because that was apparently a thing in the 70s. Right, but... I, over actual, you know, studying for things. Right, but in his... So basically in his background they say that he was advanced for his age. He um, skipped a grade. I think he skipped sixth grade, something like that. So he was bored by what other people found challenging so i can understand why he might not find college very exciting it's somewhere it said that he even in high school like um audited a class at stanford so i was confused as to why he didn't just go to stanford but either way he went to read college so regardless but anyway so the movie basically just follows him through opening the apple store in his or store at the company in his garage and his then, dad's garage. That he didn't own a garage. Right. Like his he, dad's garage in Los Alto. Uh, Los Alto, something Alto in California. Uh, and like that, Palo Alto. No, I I I actively didn't say Palo Alto because I'm pretty sure it's like a Los or something like that. Okay. But anyways, so that place is oh, Los Altos. It was so oh. close in California. Um, it actually, a lot of the movie was filmed in that actual location and that location actually still stands in 2013. It was deemed historical. Okay. And so whatever that means, it can't go anywhere. It, I, I think it know. has to be maintained in a certain aesthetic and you can't change it or. Yeah. So, but the rest of the movie just kind of follows how he founded Apple, got kicked out of Apple and came back to Apple. Um, they miss a lot of his life. But to be honest, like, I know, so I know that a lot of people really hated this movie. Like, I mean, everything I read was 
everyone hated this movie. One, it's being compared to that other movie that everyone tweeted at us. I think that one's called Steve Jobs from 2015. Right. Um, so, one, the comparison. But two, people hated Ashton Kutcher. They thought he was terrible. Well, he was kind of a dick. Like, I wanted to kill him in this movie. Like, I but hated Steve Jobs. Do you think he a was person. a bad actor in the movie? No, he's not a bad actor. I don't know if it was an accurate portrayal of Steve Jobs. I'm sure he had moments where he yelled at people and was not easy to, so to deal with. So, from what I read, he wasn't a nice person. <laughs> Like, he, what they said was that they, he did have moments of personal development, but that came after. Right. So they were saying that, like, they should have shown more of that. But at the time period, from what everyone was saying, it seemed pretty accurate to him. Right. So I don't know, obviously, anything. I only, like, read what I could read for this. I didn't know much about Steve Jobs before this movie. Me neither. I heard one story where they were developing either the iPod or the iPhone, mm -hmm. and he wanted it smaller. And so the engineer's like, well, it's this big, it's the size of a deck of cards. It's small. And he threw it in a fish tank, and it sank to the bottom, and air was coming out. And he's like, see that? That's space. Make it smaller. What? I didn't and hear And destroyed that. the prototype and made them start from scratch, basically. Jeez. No, I didn't hear that. But so I don't know how accurate that is, but that was one thing. And then the other big thing they said is that he they missed very large milestones or glossed over them. Such as? Uh, such as, like, the next part of his life, um, part of Pixar, his association with Pixar, his association with Disney. Um, you did clearly more research than I did. I'm a little bit found wanting. But anyway, so they said that they skipped over a lot of those things. Um, they also skipped over the his inspiration from Xerox, things like that. Ah, uh, the 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 G, the GUI or the graphics user interface. Yes. So that he stole. Then then Microsoft stole, and he was upset about it being stolen after it was stolen. Right. So I mean, a lot of those things were missed. There was another. I don't know um, how you can be mad about someone stealing something that you already stole. Like that's. He didn't steal from Xerox. Well, he didn't had steal. They had an but, agreement. So. Okay, but at the same time, he had an agreement with Microsoft, and then Microsoft made it better with Windows. Okay, I'm not getting into these technicalities, but um, apparently there is another movie, a made-for-TV movie called Pirates of the Silicon Valley, and yes. everyone states that's better than both movies? Steve Jobs movies. I don't know. I haven't seen them, but that's what the word on the street is. I do know that uh, was prefers that to this movie and he prefers the other movie to this movie as well so uh, there's been a lot of um kind of going back and forth about the Waz character okay so how do you feel about that character uh well in the movie he was portrayed as a very one-dimensional computer nerd which i'm sure that is a, a big part of the actual Waz because he is a computer person mm -hmm. but it's not just one thing. No one does just one thing. Like, people are complex and have other sides to them. I didn't really get a whole lot of that from him other than being an awkward nerd. Right. I mean, so one part that they missed about him that I thought they, once I read about it, I felt like they should have put it in the movie, is that you know how Steve Jobs didn't give shares to the, the people that started... The people he screwed over his friends right. from the beginning? Yeah. So Waz took aside some of his own shares and put them aside for them. And he also put aside like a like a pool for other people who came in that would want shares that might want to buy them. Right. So employees later down the line that could buy shares of Apple at a reasonable price. Right. Apparently that was taken advantage of in some ways and things like that. But I think that if they I had heard, shown that... It well, I heard rumors of people actually paying people who worked for Apple to buy the shares and then pay them for the shares. Right. Or people that got hired just to get the shares and right. then left. Right. But um, but I feel like if they had shown that, it would have shown more of who Waz was more than just that. And also what they got wrong with him is he never actually left Apple. Actually, to this day, he still technically is an employee of Apple. He did go on and do his own thing. Um, he, I wrote down somewhere that he, oh yeah, he created um, a company called CL9 and he actually created the first universal remote. It Ooh. wasn't actually super Thank popular. Thank you, Waz. Right, it wasn't actually super popular, but and didn't have the success. But, but he was still contracted through Apple and had a basically non-compete clause. He couldn't do anything that would compete with Apple. 
Which is now basically everything. Basically, yes. Apple owns the world. Just like Disney, which he's affiliated with, so that's kind of weird. Uh, phones, uh, computers. What what do they not do? What does Apple not do these days? I don't... Farm? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Um, did you know that the inspiration on how they started deciding they wanted to sell electronics is that they originally, Steve and Waz, created uh, what you call a blue box, which is how people would get free long-distance phone calls, and they would sell it illegally. And once they realized how well it sold, they decided what that... Is, I don't know what that is. It, they said it, it said something about it created the frequencies needed to get a free long-distance long distance call. So they sold it illegally, and then they realized how great the money they could make by creating electronics, and that mm. started inspiring them to do this. Hmm. Interesting. So, criminals. I mean, it's like black market stuff. It's probably like selling like a ripped DVD nowadays. Yeah, well, I mean... Would you buy a ripped DVD? I mean, I, mean I, I wouldn't. We all... I don't think anybody knows my weirdness, but... Uh, well, you are slowly, slowly caving on that. You've I know, I've jaywalked. <laughs> trespassed so in Philly. I did, I trespassed. I mean, granted, I didn't know I trespassed until after I trespassed. But that's really not relevant. I did do Ignorance it. of the law is no excuse, right. as they I say. Right, I did it. I did it. Yeah. So, I don't know. Proud of Certified myself. Certified badass. I know. Dun, dun, dun. I need, like, a theme song. I, what was what was the arm <laughs> flailing there? I don't... I was dancing to my new theme song. Uh, the, what? There, Every wrestler, you know, when they come out with those there, badass theme songs? There are no <laughs> words, people. There are just no no words. I. He's just jealous. But anyway, um, so another thing that people say a lot about this movie is that the um, writing was terrible, um, that it was a bad script. And I I don't really know that I have an opinion on that because I wasn't really paying much attention to the script. But now, in retrospect, I do know that the screenwriter, this was his first screenplay, and the director actually didn't do many movies prior to this. He, um, he was known for something called Swing Vote with Kevin Costner. But, I mean, it, it was a box office dud and didn't do well. Yeah, because it was a terrible movie. It was about Kevin Costner being the one vote to decide the president of the United States. Oh, yeah. And they, the, both candidates fly out and try to buy his vote, essentially. Why do you know this movie? I just know what it is, because you said swing vote. Well, yes, that's so... Anyway, so they're both newbies, so that may have played into why it didn't do as well. I really... Uh -huh. I mean, they the also said it was rushed right after his death to get to the theater. get to market. Yeah, that's. I don't know when did he die? Twenty eleven. Two thousand eleven, I believe. So this came out in twenty thirteen. Something like that. So yeah, I mean that is pretty quick for a movie to hit. Well, it's two years. I mean, you have to start filming. Basically. Oh, it's just two years. So okay, it's you it's... can clearly do a movie in two years. I couldn't do a movie. Period. So let's 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 be real here. I mean, the acting was fine. For the most part. I mean, I didn't have really any problems with it. Uh, Ashton Kut Kutcher killed the older Steve Jobs mannerisms. I mean, when we first... So when the movie first started and you saw him... Granted, I don't wear my glasses when I watch movies because I hate God, my life. Can we can we start a internet thing to make her wear the glasses for the podcast movies that she has to watch? I just... It's... Okay, so there's like a whole thing. Like, I mean, they're in the car so that I can drive and see... And if I bring them in the house, then I forget them in the car, and then I drive without seeing, but, and it's like a lot. I mean, it's just... Can I have, like, house glasses and car glasses? Like, so I mean, get glass? Why, why Cause, not? Because we need to be rich. How is this on me? I'm just looking at you because you're the one in the room. But anyway, so because I couldn't see, it could be just me, but when we first started the movie, I saw a lot of similarities in what Steve Jobs looks like and what Ashton Kutcher looks like. Like, I mean... The mannerisms, the way he was, like, walking, just, like, all of it. Right. But I didn't know a lot about Steve Jobs. So, I mean, obviously, people that know him better would probably be able to pick out, like, little nuances the... that we would not be able to. I would imagine so. Right. So. But there's that. So, um... Well, there's a lot of stuff that this movie didn't go into. Like, it stopped right as Steve Jobs basically gets back to Apple when they're about to go under. Right. And uh, so it doesn't cover the, the unluckiest man in the world, which I have to talk about. Go for it. I don't know who that is, so. Oh, his name is Ronald Wayne. 
mm-hmm. and he sold his 10% stake in Apple for $800. And it would it would be worth $95 billion today. That's so, so sad. Can you imagine giving up something for $800? Let's say in today's dollars, we'll say ten grand, $10,000. And having cost you $95 billion? I can't, I can't even imagine almost having $95 billion. Like, that's not... The fact that this man is still alive, so far as I'm aware, is a testament to his moral character. Because I'd be like, nope, I don't want to live in this world. <laughs> I, I, nope, no, nope. Another thing I didn't go into was his association with Pixar and Disney. Like, I am curious how that happened. Like, I know that they said that he helped found the graphics department of Lucasfilm, which became Pixar, which right. I didn't know Lucasfilm became Pixar. Lucasfilm is Star Wars, right? Yes. I didn't know that Pixar was... Me neither. But now I do. I didn't know it had anything to do with Lucasfilms or Apple. Me neither, but here we are. So, Today I learned. And another thing, Steve Jobs was executive producer on Toy Story. Really? Yeah. First ever computer generated movie. Yeah, with Steve Jobs. Who knew? Awesome. But um, oh, you know what we didn't talk about what? that we need to talk about? Fruititarian. Oh, the fruititarian? Yeah, what is... That's just really dumb. So, what did you think it was? Because you were wrong, so I would like to hear. Is it someone who eats just fruit? So, it says that it's somebody who eats fruits, veggies, nuts, and seeds, just no animal products. So, so I'm confused. Vegan. That's what I was going to say. How is it different from vegan? I don't, I don't... know. Because so... he does become a vegan later in life. But he has a period where he's fruititarian. So. And he actually has a period where he only eats carrots and apples. And he gets a sunset glow, they say. I, I, what is a sunset glow? I'm assuming Did he you, looks orange is what I'm guessing. He probably is jaundiced. That's what I, well, no, because carrots, if you eat too many carrots, they turn you orange. That's, that's probably fair. So there is a theory out there because uh, supposedly Ashton Kutcher became a fruititarian for this movie because he was method acting because he was method acting and he started having pancreatic problems that's not a theory that's a fact he did and then steve jobs died of pancreatic cancer so there's a theory that his his lifestyle contributed to his death well it also very much did contribute to his death because he refused treatment for nine months and and did alternative medicine which included Diet and well, meditation and all of those things. That's the hippie in him, darling. Well, well he grew right. Up, he grew up in the early 70s. Right. But so because he did that, apparently his pancreatic cancer was the only treatable form of pancreatic cancer or one of the few. And he decided to wait nine months and use alternative medicine. And then he was not able to be saved. Even though he did get a whipple and do all those things, he it had gone too long. Oh, well, right. It became terminal at that point, even though he had more money than basically everyone. Right, but it very much was his lifestyle. I just... So do you think that... No. So he was adopted. By his... Which is weird because his birth father is apparently a self-made millionaire. Right, and now he's Muslim, from what I understood. Yes, he's from Syria, I I believe. I'm unclear on that part. But, so do you think that any of his lifestyle choices, the fact that he went away to, like, meditate and all these things, like, has anything to do with his birth family? Or do you think it's just the hippie in him? Because he went to, like, India for a bunch of time to, like, meditate and do all that stuff. Like India is different than Syria. Well, of course it is. But I just don't know if any of his... Well, it's Hindu or Buddhist versus... Islam or Muslims. I'm talking about the meditation and things and like that. And now this is turning into a borderline conversation. I really don't want to have... I don't think... I don't know if I did. I think it's just because he was a hippie, honestly. Well, the only reason I asked is because he was very not interested in learning about his family at all. Like, he didn't want anything to do with it until... I think he said his... Was it his mom or somebody? Somebody got sick and he decided that he wanted to look into it more. Found out he had a sister and he became really close to his sister. And... Then at that point he found out who his father was, but he refused to let his father know who he was because he was so rich. So I was just curious, like if maybe he did have some desire to like know more and like learn about his roots, and maybe that like contributed to like the lifestyles and stuff he chose. I mean, it's entirely possible. I think it has more to do with his hippiness because he did do a lot of LSD. <laughs> he said that that was one of the most defining moments of his life. Yes, he did. He's on the record 
speaking to a reporter, and he said it was a, one of the most important moments in his life. Doing. Do, do you think that doing LSD is like? I mean, people say it like opens up your mind, and you know all like you learn all the secrets of the world. And I mean, I've never done any kind of drug, so neither have I. So, but do you think like we missed out? Like, did we miss something? Did we miss our moment? Could we have been rich? Is was that was that you know, what we did wrong? We didn't. Well, we, we have didn't... our idea already, darling. We can't talk about it really because we don't want people to steal it. But we have an idea. But maybe if we were on LSD, we would have an idea that's already fleshed out. It's already drawn. It's already done. But we don't have a prototype. This is not related to this podcast. Why are we having this argument? Because I'm asking oh you if my. LSD is important and you're not... I don't know. Probably not. It's it's a hallucinogenic drug. How important can it possibly be? I don't know. I mean, I've heard a lot of things. I'm just saying. Look you... at the Beatles. Okay. They obviously did LSD and they were very, very rich. Yeah, because they were very talented musicians. Right, because they tripped on LSD. No, they were talented mus- musicians before that. They just happened to, after that, trip on LSD. <sighs> Whatever, you're no fun to, to banter with apparently today, so we're just going to move on. So there was that moment I want to talk about where the person that was being forced out was the most wrong that anyone has ever been. Where he said... Maybe we should rethink the computer being important. The personal computer. The personal computer. Maybe we should rethink that and not try to sell them. No. Well, so I mean, I think part of that is they weren't there yet. Like, the world wasn't there yet. They weren't ready. I know that, like, when the computer became a thing, nobody actually had them. That was, like, for the elite rich people. Like, that wasn't... You know, the average well, everyday person didn't have them. And the ones that started off the whole craze of having a computer didn't have the internet. Right. Were very limited in their capacity to do things. Right. So it was a... To start off with, it was primarily just a novelty. I just don't but, know why I don't remember Apple having the first computer. Because I always I think of know. PCs as being the first computer. Yeah, because Microsoft became a monopolistic juggernaut back in the day. Yeah, I guess. It's just very strange that, like, the timeline we remember as we grew up with it is not... Well, so Apple came out strong, and then they faded, and then Microsoft came out strong and then never looked back. And everyone use, everyone uses a PC for the most part to do basically everything. Uh, Apple is more used for artistic people and, and, and graphics things and so forth. It's seen as more not traditional right no it's a novelty to, for sure i mean i know i had an apple in college because i needed it for design stuff but no i i i don't think i've ever owned an apple computer i had an iphone for a period of time but i switched to android so i don't think other than my ipod from back in the day but it seems like he was the one that came up with what we know about computers today like the the menu bar he was talking about in the movie. I don't know how true that is, but they mentioned it in the it movie. Was the 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 GUI, the graphics user interface, where he was trying to work out how to click on stuff with the mouse. Oh, okay, and, okay. Uh, so yeah, that that stuff is from Steve Jobs and Apple, but then it was taken over by Microsoft. Stolen. Yeah. And then they didn't talk about this in the movie, but I I believe that Microsoft was experiencing issues with the federal government being an actual monopoly and they needed competition and the only competition they had was apple but they were about to go out of business so microsoft gave them a bunch of money to stay in business oh, as a loan i, I didn't believe that. well it was i wasn't in the movie i think that's what happened i could be wildly wrong i'm probably wildly wrong i mean i know apple bought next Next or whatever it was called, which was Jobs' company, right? And that those products became basically Apple. So Next is basically is Apple now. So right. they used all of the stuff that they had been doing and made money that way. But I didn't hear that Microsoft bought bought them out. I but think, it's very well, I don't possible. think they bought them out. I just think they gave them a loan that they paid back. It's very possible. Just to keep them in business, so they can say, "Hey, we got competition. It's not a monopoly. We have that person." Yeah, it's very possible. I didn't read that, but... Uh, we also didn't talk about the 
colorful computers. Like we, computers were always gray growing mm -hmm. up, right? Like that was the thing. Yes. And the the Apple computer was the first one with actual color on it. I wanted that computer. I I didn't really want it. It just it was wildly different. I wanted it in my room. It would have added a nice element. Uh, sure. I mean, maybe. Uh, I I don't know. I just I didn't want. It. I knew I wanted the iPod because the iPod was the most amazing thing ever. Because the CD players sucked. I just wanted Snake on the iPod. I'm not even gonna lie. That's the whole reason I wanted the iPod. No, I wanted to have all my music in one place rather than having to put in different CDs and worry about skipping. Skipping sucks. I see. I just use YouTube now, so I don't even remember if I even used the iPod for that. Because I I remember being real annoying to put it all on the iPod because you had to like put it into your computer and you had to sync it and I hated it so I stopped doing well, it. Once you're done with that it's it's done though. Like I it's... know but it was too much work. But it was such a step forward from CD players. CD players if you breathed on them back in the day they would skip and you'd miss lyrics and yeah I was a CD player kind of gal. No oh yeah. god what kind of person are you? Anyway, so this has been a very boring podcast. So I'm very sorry about that, but it's not that boring. It's mildly boring. Okay. It's yeah. I'm sick and he's. I don't know. Apologies. Anyways, so we have to do the audience ask, and we don't have many questions because apparently nobody's seen this movie or because they all watched the other movie, which we didn't know about beforehand, and it's kind of right moot point. But anyway, the contrarians ask. Moot point. Moot, not mute, Joey. I know. Anyway, we've the already had that argument separately. Yes, the contrarians asked, "Do you think Josh Gad cried way too much in this movie?" So I read this, and I gotta say, I don't even remember him crying. So the only scene I remember him crying was when he left Apple, which Waz didn't actually do apparently. Well, right, and I just literally don't remember him crying. So no, he didn't cry too much because I. It was that, to my knowledge, I, I only remember that one scene where he was crying. Well, and I would cry in that moment, too. I mean, If he's leaving a company and he's well, saying goodbye. Well, he's not just leaving a company. He was basically leaving his friend. Right. Yeah. But. And then, I'm going to butcher this, but La Femme Maror, I think, um, is the handle. They said, I'd like a discussion on Jobs' disconnect between his private and public persona. And is it really relevant? So... Say again. She said, I'd like a discussion on Jobs, the disconnect between his private and public persona, and is it really relevant? Is there a difference between his public persona and his private persona? Was he just... Well, I mean, so what I thought when I read this was that you really thought of Jobs as this genius, like, really... Um, put together, about, put together charismatic. Put together about people, like, all of that stuff. Right. But then you see in behind the scenes where he didn't even want his daughter, like, he was... Nasty to people. He wasn't even the brains of it all. Like Waz was. He's more of like the face. He's the idea the... man and the face of the company. Right. So I mean, that's what I thought of when I saw this. So I suppose that's fair. But I will say that he he seemed well. From what I read, he seemed to grow into being the person that he became, and that he wasn't. I mean, he named a computer after his daughter. He so he became more of a family man. He. He, he did seem to appreciate his people more as things went on. He even did so much as um, a recycling thing for when the iPods came out that people could return their iPod after they were done using it to the Apple store and Apple would, you know, recycle the parts so that you wouldn't have waste. So he obviously started, like, caring a little bit more and being more of, like, a person. Okay. So, I don't know, like, maybe the disconnect was just he wasn't quite sure who he was yet. He was a kid. He was a very young millionaire, like, 23 when he something got to like Forbes, that? Yeah. something like that. So, must be nice. could just be finding himself, and maybe... I mean, I'm, I'm a vastly different person than I was when I was in my mm, early 20s. We know. Thanks we for that. Know. You're a different person, too. You have to be. You're I not don't, the, you're I not don't the know. Same, you're not the same person you were know. when you were 20. I don't know. I really don't. Like, I've never... Nobody's ever told me I've changed. And I've never been confronted with things in writing about the fact oh that I've changed. Oh, my God. Stop. All right. So, you know what? <laughs> there has to be a difference from back when you were younger. Google me. I don't know. I do, how am I going to Google you? I don't know. There's got to be something out there. I don't know. I just... I know that I was different. Everyone that I've ever known is drastically different, depending on where they are in their life and 
Yeah, I mean, people, men do take longer to come into their own. I'm going to... I'm just saying. So, anyways, but that's that. Um, do we have rating for the movie? Uh, well, I did have one other thing. Oh, oh, uh, he's got a thought. What did I'm I want to say? Um, I don't even remember now. God, this is awful. Yeah, this is a bad part. I'm so sorry, guys. Next week, I promise you that he's going to get his crap together. I promise. I don't even know what next movie is. It's your pick. I <laughs> know. That's the problem. It, I, do, I do think I know what it is. Anyway, I think I would give this movie a 6.75. Okay. Why so low? I don't know. It was fine. It was just I think that it was fairly cherry-picked. Like, and it wasn't very in-depth and it didn't show multiple sides it just showed one one thing Mm -hmm. i feel okay i mean i was going to give it a seven and a half um the only reason i went as low as i did was just because i was able to find way more information about him with like maybe a 10 minute google search and i just felt like some of the stuff that i found was kind of more interesting than the things that were in the movie Right. Um, but for what they put in there, I did enjoy what I what I saw. Like I didn't see anything against what I saw. So that's fair. Oh, I remembered what I wanted to say. So that ad that he read at the end of the movie, uh-huh. where he gave that great Super quote, Bowl ad? which I can't even remember now. Mm-hmm. It was actually retaped in someone else's voice for the ad, and Was they, it like Richard Dreyfuss or something, something like that. And then. No one had heard Steve Jobs do the ad, and then they re- they played it at his funeral. I did read that, and that's so really nice. It was it was nice. I mean, I, that's a nice add into the movie as kind of a, a little bit of a, a tribute, even though it was read by Ashton Kutcher. What I should have done is splice in his actual. They should have. That would have been awesome. Right. That would have been so so much better than just having Ashton Kutcher. No, nothing personal. To Ashton Kutcher, but just splice in the actual recording at the end. Right. I agree. Would have been awesome. So, Anyways, so we're at 32 minutes, so yes. what are we doing next week? Uh, that's, I believe, Ip Man. That's what you have on the calendar. That's what I'm on the calendar. I, I We haven't watched a Kung Fu movie, really, have we? No, we have not. Kung Fu Panda. Does that count? It's really more of an animated movie, and... I mean, you can count it if you want, but I... No. I would say this will be the first Kung Fu movie. Um, we're going to have to add more because we haven't watched a Jackie Chan movie. There's there's so much to, to put onto the list. Yeah, so if you guys have Kung Fu movies you want us to see, let us know. I'm not super excited about Kung Fu, but, you know, maybe it'll make Tyler more exciting. Gee, thanks. You're welcome. All right. So, um, I just wanted to say thank you for Jake at this music for our intro and outro music, and... I look forward to dreading next week.